Hi, it's Paul Anderson and this is Life Science Core Idea 2B. It's basically on matter and energy and how they're transferred in an ecosystem. And so we want students to really understand how ecosystems function, how matter moves in and out of life. And so how do we get there? Well, in the elementary level, at the lower elementary grades, we want to make sure that we know the difference between what an organism is and what the environment is. And a picture like this is a great place to start. You could have them list all the organisms they can see, and then what are all the parts of the environment. We don't have to use the words biotic and abiotic. So what are some of the living things that you see here? Well, the elk, for sure. We see pine trees, we see grass. But don't neglect, there's going to be trout here in the, in the uh, stream. There's going to be insects everywhere. There's going to be bacteria everywhere. And so those are going to be the organisms. And then what is the environment? Well, the environment is going to be the atmosphere. It's going to be the water. It's going to be the chemicals that are found in the soil. It's going to be the soil itself. Those are going to be the environment. And matter is required by organisms. And so they're going to get that from their environment. As we move forward in uh, elementary school, we really want to talk about how matter is recycled, how it's used over and over again. And the standards put forward this idea of composting as a good place to start, and it's great. So if we think about how plant material on a farm, for example, is made, how do these crops grow? Well, they're getting matter from the soil, and they're also getting matter from the atmosphere. So they're getting matter from the air. So what's some matter from the air that the plants are taking in? They're taking in carbon dioxide. What is some matter from the soil? Nitrogen, they're taking in water, taking in nutrients that they require, and so this matter will combine to make life or living matter and it's conserved the amount of matter that we had before and after is going to be exactly the same in composting what are we doing well now that material is dyed and we need to return the matter to the environment and bacteria are really good at breaking down that waste and then removing it uh, from the living material and moving it back into the environment and so what happens a lot of that matter goes back into the atmosphere and a lot of it becomes part of the soil itself so nitrogen that's going to be found in that really um, rich composted material is going to be matter that we can then return back to plant material and the whole process goes over and over again. And so the amount of matter that we have on our planet, tell them, is the same. It's just moving into life and out of life. And the same could be said for animals, that when we eat plants, that matter becomes part of us. And through our waste or when we die and as we break down, it's going to be returned back to the environment. And so as we move into the middle school, we want to start talking about how the energy is actually flowing. And food webs are a great place to start with that. And what they're really showing, what are the arrows showing, is they're showing where energy and matter goes. And so right here, this bird is feeding on seeds on a tree, but if it's eaten by a coyote, we're going to get movement of matter in this direction. And what you can see is that everything is going to come from the producers. It's going to come from the plants. But if we want to return that matter so it can be used again by the plants, we have to have decomposers that can do that. The problem with the food web is it doesn't show you one thing. It doesn't really show you the environment and where matter is coming from. And so a good thing that to look at would be a matter cycle. So we're looking at where the cycle actually flows. And so this picture right here, where is the matter found? Where is it going? And then how is it being returned back to the environment? And so basically it all begins with the environment. So what's some type of matter that we would find? in the environment, carbon dioxide would be something that's found that you can't see in this picture, but it's going to become part of the producers or part of the plants. And so that carbon dioxide is being used by plants through photosynthesis to create sugar, to actually create the plant. Where could the matter go next? Well, it could be eaten by an insect. And so now it moves the matter from a producer to a consumer. And maybe that insect in turn is eaten by another consumer, like this frog that is waiting here for a tasty meal. Now the matter flows into the frog. But when the frog dies, or it leaves waste behind, that matter can be decomposed and can be returned to the environment again. Now this is usually where matter goes, from the environment to the producers, consumers, decomposers, but know that it doesn't have to go in that direction. Obviously we're taking in material from the environment. Um, so for example, oxygen is something that I'm breathing in from the environment, and plants don't have to be eaten by consumers for them to be decomposed and moved back into the environment, but it does show where matter is flowing. And the neat thing about matter is that it stays the same on our planet. The amount of matter that we have is the same. It just moves through life 
is utilized by life and then it returns back to the environment, different than energy. And so these two processes that allow us to do this are photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So what does photosynthesis allow plants to do? Take material in their environment and actually make plants out of it. And so in photosynthesis, we're taking in water, we're taking in carbon dioxide, and then we're using the power of the sun to actually make material, to make sugars. Those sugars are going to be combined with oxygen in animals, and we're going to break that down into water and carbon dioxide through cellular respiration so we can get energy out of it. And so one big thing you should note is that we're going to lose matter and we're going to lose energy along the way. And so we're going to have way more producers generally in an ecosystem than we are going to be um, consumers. And so as you're at the high school level, it's really important that you start talking about ecological pyramids and this idea that at the low level of a food web or the low level of a feeding pyramid, um, we're going to have way more matter, energy, and and, and uh, and uh, individuals. And so let's start there. This is be a, a number pyramid in a temperate grassland. And so basically in 0 0.01 hectares, which is not very much area, these are the number of individuals in this study that they found at the level of producers, first consumers, second consumers, and third consumers. And what you can see is there's a nice pyramid in the number of individuals that we have. And so what are these 1.5 million individuals? It's going to be grass that's found within that temperate grassland. What's feeding on them? Well, insects are going to be one of the big things that are feeding on that. What's feeding on those insects? Other insects, but also things like mice. And then what is this one consumer here? Well, if you've been in a temperate grassland, one thing you're going to see a lot of are going to be hawks, but not that many. And the reason why is that we're losing energy and matter along the way. And so if we look at the actual biomass or the matter in an ecosystem, so this is a coral reef ecosystem on the Marshall Islands. In this study, what they looked at was the grams per meter squared. We found that we're going to have way more grams on a square meter at the producer level. And so this is mostly in a coral reef going to be the algae than the consumers that feed on top of that and then the consumers that feed on top of the consumers. So a lot of these are going to be fish at that level. And if we were to look at energy, we find the same thing. And so this is at Silver Springs State Park in Florida. And what they were studying here was the energy within an ecosystem. And this is in kilocals per meter squared per year. And so basically the producers are going to have way more energy. Where did they get that energy from? The sun. What did they do with the energy? They converted it into the energy of their food. And then that energy is given off to the um, consumers who are then given off to the consumers and consumers again. And there's this general rule called the 10% rule. And this kind of follows that, that you're basically only moving 10% of the energy to the next level. And so basically that's ecological pyramids. It's based on this idea that photosynthesis is taking matter in the environment and making it usable matter and then cellular respiration is used consumers to used by consumers to release energy uh, and i hope that was helpful